Not too long ago, we released a video talking about enhanced conversion tracking for Google Ads. If you're interested in that, you can check out this video right here. But today, we're going to talk about something very similar, but for LinkedIn ads instead. With all the changes to the privacy rules and regulations across the web, it's getting more and more difficult to track back any performance, whether it be conversion or events, that happen on your website back to your conversion campaigns in the platforms. So today I'm going to run you through what the enhanced conversion tracking setup is in LinkedIn ads and show you how to get it turned on for your account. Let's start off with talking about the fundamentals of enhanced conversions on LinkedIn. I think it's important to know the overall context of what this change is, because even though this video is only talking about LinkedIn, this trend is going to impact pretty much every advertising platform we have access to. In its most basic form, LinkedIn enhanced conversions are effectively adding a piece of click ID tracking to the end of the URLs that allow you to create first party cookies from your website rather than using LinkedIn or a third party source. So this is going to appear similar to a Google or a Facebook click ID. And the actual syntax, according to LinkedIn's text, is that it's gonna look about like this. It's the li underscore fat underscore ID. And then there'll be an identifying parameter after that. So overall, the change itself is relatively simple, but I want to spend a bit of time talking about the difference between the first party cookies and third party, because that is going to make a really big difference moving forward. So a first party cookie is a small piece of code that a web browser stores in a file on the viewer's computer to remember their activity on a site, like when a viewer has visited a page or downloaded an article from your website. A first party cookie comes from the domain or website the member is browsing. So that means that you as the advertiser and the owner of the website are effectively hosting the first party cookie from your domain or site rather than it being from someplace else. The benefits to a first party cookie are that it is a workaround for some browsers and apps that block third party cookies. They're also stored for a little bit longer and usually users will enable first party cookies because it does improve their browser experience. Now third party cookies on the other hand, those are pieces of code that come from a domain other than the one the member is browsing. So when somebody clicks on an ad, they're directed to a website, at which point a third party cookie is saved on their computer. When this code is fired, you can track a person's actions across the site if third party cookies are not blocked. Now that already leans into one of the biggest issues with third party cookies is that they're being blocked at a much higher rate, especially by browsers. Safari 11 has already blocked third party cookies and more browsers are anticipating doing that. But aside from the browser perspective, even from a user point of view, viewers can use things like incognito or anonymous mode to make it so that third party session won't be tracked. They can also manually disable third party cookies. So there are a number of issues with the third party approach. If for no other reason, it's a problem that browsers are going to block them. So even though the functionality is relatively similar, the first party approach will allow us to be able to track things that third party is going to start missing out on. And the biggest issues for that when it comes to paid media are going to be in your conversion tracking and audience creation. If you've listened to me talk on a number of other topics, you know that conversion tracking and audience creation are not a perfect science. You usually have to have a few different tactics to try and track things to get the best insight of performance for your campaigns. But with this third party issue, it's only going to be a bigger gap between the reality of the performance and what you're seeing in the platform. So upgrading to a first party cookie is going to be imperative to see the right performance and create the right audiences in your account. The requirements for LinkedIn enhanced conversions are pretty simple. They're really not that bad. The first is that you need to utilize site-wide tagging through the LinkedIn insight tag. And then the second is that you need to turn it on. There's a pretty quick checkbox that we're going to go through, but the first step is going to be making sure that you're using site-wide tagging through the insight tag. But if you have set up tracking in the past, it's important to make sure you're using the insight tag as opposed to the image tag. Previously, LinkedIn allowed us to use one of two different types of tracking, but now the image tag is not going to work moving forward. One very quick way to know if you have an image tag that needs to be upgraded is by simply logging into your account and seeing if you have an alert. In any of the accounts that I've run campaigns that had the tracking set up with the image pixel prior to me coming to the account, I noticed a pop-up that looked like this. It says you're required to update your conversion tracking. You need to use the insight tag instead of the image pixel to avoid conversion loss. 
So overall, pretty simple. And it prompts you into the area of the account that you'll need to do that. And just as a quick overview for those of you who want a little bit more insight on this, if you're using a site-wide image pixel, you need to implement the insight tag on your website instead of the site-wide image pixel, and that'll take care of it. But if you're only using event-specific image pixels, you need to switch over that event-specific conversion to an event-specific conversion from the insight tag. So the first thing I want to do is hop into an account and show you what that update process would look like, just so you've got an understanding of how that would take place. I'm on the conversion tracking page within our LinkedIn placeholder account. And if you don't know how to get here, it's pretty simple. Just head up to account assets and click conversion tracking and it'll land you on this page. The easiest way to find the conversion actions that you need to upgrade to your insight tag away from an image pixel is going to be to use this data source column. As you can see here, we don't do a good job of keeping this account up to date because we don't run any campaigns from it. Both of these are triggered as image pixel. And if they were set up properly, it would say site-wide tag. We obviously have some work to do here. The good news is that LinkedIn makes it pretty easy to update these. To update this on-site YouTube views conversion action to the site-wide tag, I'm just gonna click on the conversion name. You can see that setting up each conversion requires three steps, settings, the campaigns, and then the sources. I'm gonna skip through all the way to sources and leave everything else the same. You can see down here that we have an alert from LinkedIn because we're using an image pixel, that it may cause conversion count loss due to privacy practice changes within the industry. Let's make some adjustments. Although it's not called out as clearly as I might like it to be, you can see here that we're using an event specific pixel because it's highlighted in blue, but to update away from that image pixel, we're going to select insight tag, which is recommended. Depending on what the conversion action is and how it needs to be tracked, I can then either add in my URL parameters that will track conversions by a specific page load, or I can change this method and switch it to event, and then I can add this specific piece of tracking code to my Google Tag Manager account or into the backend portion of the website to the specific event that I'm trying to track, and it'll carry on just as it was with the image pixel. I haven't made any actual updates to the website, but let's assume that I did. And then once I'm finished, all I would do is click update. You would then come back here and the image pixel would then be replaced with that site-wide tag language. So you'll be able to see very quickly at a glance which of your conversion actions are using the right tracking practices. So assuming you've updated all of your conversion actions to be implemented from the site-wide tag, the last thing we need to do is actually opt into enhanced conversions. And this process is going to be even more simple than updating an image pixel was. All we need to do is head up to this section here that says manage insight tag, click the drop down and go to settings. Here you'll see that there's only one setting that you can really change. And all we need to do is check the box right here that says first party cookies and click IDs will automatically be added to landing page URLs of your ads. Once you've checked the box, all you have to do is hit save. And now it's done. We've opted into enhanced conversion tracking on LinkedIn. The last thing that I want to call out, there was a little bit of text on the previous screen, but it is that from time to time, even though it's very rare, there can be issues with some of the first party tracking on LinkedIn. If you start having issues with your site after implementing first party tracking, there is this entire help section that has a number of common issues and will walk you through different steps to try and problem solve and get everything sorted out so that your site will still function properly and you can utilize the first party cookies through the LinkedIn platform. Overall, the process itself is very easy to update individual conversion actions to the insight tag. And it's also obviously very easy to check the one box to make sure that you're opted into enhanced conversions on LinkedIn. But hopefully this overview has given you a better understanding of the difference between first and third party cookies and the adjustments that we're going to have to make not only in LinkedIn, but in a number of other advertising platforms in the months and years ahead to make sure that we are complying with privacy issues issues and being able to track the performance and audiences from our campaigns as well as possible. If you have any other questions on the enhanced conversions on LinkedIn specifically, or just the privacy shifts overall, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.